When I look at Doom Eternal, all I see is this. Is it because my brain is broken? Yes. But it's also because the two newest Doom games owe so much of their success to the ancient art of slapstick comedy. It's the wet, goopy glue that binds the whole experience together. And if you take it away, everything else falls apart. See, the team at id had dialed in the combat design for Doom pretty early on in development. It's going to be fast and relentless like the original Doom, but with a new level of fidelity and the addition of glory kills, a mechanic that stuffs enemies full of life-saving resources to be harvested aggressively, like a pinata full of insulin. But as Doom's director Hugo Martin pointed out, you can't just sustain that level of violence because at a certain point it becomes hard to stomach, and that's not the kind of game he wanted to make. So what sort of game did Hugo want to make? If we dive into Doom's influences and its influences influences, we can find three keys that it used to unlock its perfect slapstick tone. The first one teaches us simply that some kinds of violence are funny, and some kinds of violence aren't. Doom wouldn't exist without this rude puppet. The team at id haven't specifically cited him as an inspiration, but the game's inspirations wouldn't exist without him or his tiny cudgel. This is the titular slapstick. It's a wooden board with an extra flap that claps closed on impact, allowing performers to do the thing that makes slapstick comedy work, and that is loud, exaggerated violence without real human suffering. This technique takes advantage of the ancient human truth that when somebody gets donked in the head or smashed in the balls, it is quite often funny. But why is it funny? What evolutionary trait prompts us to take pleasure in the pain and humiliation of others? We're not gonna find out today. I don't know, it's just funny. And when your actors are tiny wooden puppets that don't grimace or bleed or bruise, the volume of violence can be turned up, and they turned it up. And when you look at the way Doom turned out, you might think that their approach to blood and guts and violence was anything goes, but the truth is that they were really picky about what did and didn't make the cut. Hugo said that a really important role he played was protector of the tone. So he had a video reel made up that showed examples of what kind of stuff felt right for Doom and what didn't. Anything that felt overly sadistic, disturbing, or realistic was out. Anything that was fast, a little bit shocking, and silly could stay. Which pushes us into the territory of slapstick comedy violence. But that move alone wasn't enough, because even silly violence would get boring if there wasn't something there to spice it up. The slapstick of Punch and Judy would continue to evolve into new mediums, like vaudeville theater, where the art of pretending to hurt and get hurt was a real moneymaker. From this scene, we got the Three Stooges, which was doom for boomers. They were a bunch of dumbasses who were a menace to themselves and everyone around them, but they really excelled at adapting this shtick to different environments and situations. This is cool because it gave their bits a sense of inventiveness and improvisation, like they were looking at a problem and finding the dumbest possible solution that would yield the funniest punishment for their bodies. Oh. 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 Thanks, fellas. Slapstick is funniest when it fits the context of the situation, and when the punishment is tailor-made for the person on the receiving end. If a guy has a huge cast on his foot, it's funny to see it get bonked. If a guy's a neat freak, it's funny to see him get dirty. If someone has a beloved rack of collector's edition thimbles, it's funny to see it get knocked over. Doom, and especially Doom Eternal, take this to heart. Every monster you face in the game is a perfect slapstick partner. Their unique characters and shape provides the context for the brutal and silly violence. Caco demons are big, cycloptic, grinning balloons, so naturally you hit them with the old Odysseus and then deflate them. Mancubi are lumbering, dopey, hungry beasts, so you feed them something that doesn't sit well. Arachnotrons are snotty little keyboard warriors who hide behind their superior technology, so naturally you dispose of them with the classic stop hitting yourself, or by crushing them under the weight of their own machinations. That's what you get for posting. Just about every glory kill in Doom Eternal is a gag that takes into account the appearance or character of the opponent to enhance the impact. That's some good nasty slapstick. But there's still a big gap between the dry slaps of Punch and Judy and the wet gushing gore of Doom. And that's where our third key comes in. Hugo describes Doom Eternal as a sort of spiritual sequel to Sam Raimi's 1987 cult hit Evil Dead 2. But he's not talking about the first Evil Dead. 
The first Evil Dead was a zero-budget demonic horror that did a lot with humble resources and had a whole bunch of really innovative, shocking gore. But a lot of its silliness is a result of its limited means rather than deliberate comedic intent. But Evil Dead 2 would pave the way for Doom's hybridization of comedy and horror. It was influential for blending Hollywood gore effects and throwback slapstick comedy. See, Sam Raimi was a huge, huge fan of the Three Stooges. In fact, most of his films before the first Evil Dead were just Three Stooges fan films. When he had the budget and the freedom to rebuild Evil Dead from the ground up, he didn't spare the slapstick. I'm talking chairs breaking and eyeball shooting into mouths and a guy fighting his own hand. Raimi used context and character to shepherd the violence along a path that was definitely shocking and gross, but usually cartoony enough to be palatable. If showing something would be too realistic or painful to watch, they wouldn't show it. We don't see the chainsaw ripping into Ash's flesh, but we revel in seeing him plunge it into the eye of a big rubbery demon face. Hugo actually showed this exact scene to his team to exemplify the tone that he wanted for the game. Like the Deadites and the Three Stooges, Doom's demons have a ton of personality and a dark intelligence. They're not the mindless, sort of human hordes of enemies you get in a lot of horror games. They're assholes. They taunt and tease and they delight in causing pain. It makes their eventual embarrassment and destruction a little more satisfying, a little less nihilistic. They only feel as much pain as is funny. You get the visual fun of somebody getting their head cut off without the emotional baggage of somebody getting their head cut off. When Ash decapitates Henrietta, she keeps cursing him to her last breath. I do not feel bad about this. Swallow this. Doom's use of slapstick keeps the game palatable, while some other violent games might start to feel like a numbing slog. There's a moment in most prestige AAA games where the humorless, deadly serious, extreme violence just becomes a little much. The moment that makes me make this face. In Red Dead Redemption 2, I accidentally triggered an execution animation that blasted the top half of a man's head off, leaving him crumpled on the ground with a hideously detailed spurting wound and a slowly spreading pool of blood, while nobody, not even our supposedly sensitive protagonist, reacted in the slightest. Imagine that one scene in Pulp Fiction where the gun accidentally goes off and paints the inside of the car with blood, but instead of spending the rest of the movie trying to resolve that crisis, John Travolta and Sam Jackson just turn around and keep talking about cheeseburgers. It's like that. This moment in Red Dead Redemption 2 wasn't meant to be funny or frightening or satisfying. It was just procedural violence, not serving anything other than the game's obsession with realism. But in Evil Dead 2 and Doom, the blood and guts are derived from the needs of the specific gag, rather than some fetishistic anatomical accuracy. Eyeballs make a literal cork popping sound as they're plucked from a cacodemon's face. Revenants are full of blood even though they're made of bones. Arachnitrons are big sentient brains, but when they take damage, they got rib cages. Doom, with all of its constant action, blood, guts, and violence, still manages to feel less shocking and tonally wrong than a lot of big AAA games. And it does it by firmly rooting itself in a tradition of nonsensical violence, by making sure that everything that makes the player gasp can also make them laugh. Like the slapstick itself, Doom is designed to make a lot of noise and get a reaction without causing anyone real pain. <laughs> <laughs>